A man is nothing more than the terms he stands by. All right, guys, this is going to be a good one. I, uh, I've got a video here that's going to go into quite a bit of detail uh, on this subject and what I mean by this. There's actually two points I'm going to cover in this one. That's the first point. A man is nothing more than the terms he stands by. And the second point is why you should always communicate to women that you're seeing, women you're dating, that you are in demand by other women why you should do that. We're going to talk about, we're going to get into the nitty gritty details of that. Now, I'm going to talk more about the first point, why a man is nothing more than the terms he stands by, which is why I titled the video that, and the subject of why you should always communicate to women you're dating that you're in demand. We're going to, we're going to scratch the surface of that uh, in this video. And the next video I do in about two days, I'm going to release another video where I'm going to go into more detail on that second point, but we're going to touch on it in today's video. So there's three main points. There's three main, uh, yeah, points I want to cover regarding those two subjects. So here's the first one regarding why a man is nothing more than the terms he stands by. So number one, as the man, you need to set the terms by which the relationship between you and a woman will unfold. What do I mean by this? Quite simply, what I mean by this, guys, is this. Take charge. Now, I'm sure you guys saw it. There was a recent video that, um, I don't know if she's a news anchor or just, she, maybe she used to be a news anchor, now she's just a YouTube personality. Tommy Loren did a video recently on YouTube where she called all men trash. And uh, I'm sure you heard about that. If you didn't, go check that video out. It's pretty uh, amusing. But uh, one of the things she complained about in that video is how men won't set, they have a hard time being masculine in the sense that they don't set definite plans. Not everything she said, I do disagree with most of what she said in that video, okay? There's plenty of YouTube videos breaking down, uh, you know, her whole rant and how, you know, she's wrong about a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff regarding the sexual marketplace, unaware of her place within it so on and so forth but i will you know not everything she said in that video i disagree with and pretty much the only thing if i if i recall correctly that i do agree with what she said was regarding this men do have an issue with this they don't set definite plans and dates like they should like masculine men used to do men these days have a hard time doing that now for whatever reason. Um, there are actually reasons for that that are, you know, too, too intricate to go into in this video, but you don't need to be one of these men, okay? You need to take charge, okay? Don't waste time talking endlessly with a woman back and forth over a dating app. Don't waste time talking back and forth with a woman over text. Tell the woman you're communicating with that you prefer to get to know her in person, okay? You do not need and you do not want, guys, trust me, you don't need and you don't want a pen pal, all right? Women are much worse about this than men are, despite what uh, Tommy Loren was talking about. Women actually are much worse about being pen pals with guys they're talking to than men are with women. And I'll tell you why that is right here. What you guys have to understand about women is that they absolutely crave attention. They absolutely live, die, eat, sleep, breathe. Their whole existence is for attention. They love, crave, and need attention, seemingly need attention. They think they need it more than any and everything in their life. They love it more than sleep. They love it more than food. 
They love it more than sex. They love it more than everything. Attention is the currency of, of women in the year 2020. It has been for a long time, but it's, 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 it's worse now than it's ever been in the history of humanity, okay? With things like social media and Instagram. But I don't wanna go off on a tangent there. Um, basically what I'm getting at here is that there is nothing in this world that a woman loves more than attention. And if you give too much of this to her, she will milk you for everything you've got to give. You need to set the terms, guys. You need to take charge. You need to take command, all right? You need to tell her, let's meet on this night or that night, okay, for drinks. Tell her, let me know which night is easier for you. It's okay to do that, okay? In fact, you should do that. You should give her two options because if she's not available on the one night that you suggest, then, you know, just it, you want to give her two options as far as nights to meet you out, all right? That's uh, a sales technique. I've got another sales technique I'll be covering here in a few minutes, but... It's just human psychology, basically. Give, give people more than one option. Now, if she starts playing games with you after you say that to her and is giving you a wish-washy answer or responses, then dump her ass. All right, guys? There are a million women out there for you to get all hot and bothered by just one of them, okay? Um, High-value men do not waste their time investing too much of their time, energy, and attention into one woman. They don't need to. If they did, they wouldn't be high value men, okay? So here's a quick tip, guys. Um, when you are out on the first drink date or coffee date with the woman, don't start talking about the second, third, or fourth thing the two of you are gonna do together, all right? So let's say you meet her out for coffee or drinks, whatever. Don't start talking, don't start future projecting um, how, you know, the two of you eventually are going to go here and do this or go there and do that, going to travel somewhere together. Don't do that, all right? Um, well, you're only, you have to remember, you're only on the first date with the girl, okay? Doing this, saying things like this, communicates neediness and inexperience with women in general. And it may not seem like a big deal, but women pick up on subtle things like that, okay? Uh, and they don't like it, all right? They may not even be aware they don't like it, but that's irrelevant, all right? That's irrelevant because there's a lot of things women aren't aware of when it comes to how they operate. Um, there's a lot of things they're not aware of. What matters is that they, is what they respond to, and when they respond to something negatively, you shouldn't do it, okay? Uh, you know, what matters is what history has taught us about women, and these are things I've personally experienced and other men I know have experienced. Another quick note, okay, while we're on the subject. As a man, if you're not getting second or third dates out with women, okay, even if this is only a somewhat frequent occurrence for you, that's a sign, guys, and it's something you need to take note of. It's something you need to start paying attention to. If a woman, if you're going out with women and they don't find themselves wanting to hang out with you again on a second or third date, you need to pay attention to that. Now, if it happens every now and then, fine, okay? But if it happens every other time you go out with a woman, you're doing something wrong. You need to reevaluate, you know, what you're doing there, okay? If this is happening to you, here's a, here's a tip for you. Only meet women out for drinks or coffee on the first meetup, okay? I did mention that uh, a couple minutes ago. Never meet a woman out for lunch or dinner when meeting her out for the first time. Okay, meeting her for lunch or dinner is going to set up the wrong frame between the two of you right from the onset, all right? You're not a sugar daddy, okay? You're not here to buy her dinners, all right? You're not looking to become a provider to this woman, all right? And even if you're a guy that is looking for something more long-term, you still don't want to frame yourself as 
the provider type. All right, there is nothing sexy, dangerous, provocative, or adventurous about a woman seeing you as a provisioning male or provider type. All right, if that's what you end up becoming to her later on as a natural result of the relationship unfolding, then fine. All right, but you don't want her to see you as that in the first two to three months of your time getting to know her. All right, there's a big difference. You know, I think eventually if she's a woman you want to keep in your life, you know, I think I'm more of a traditionalist in the sense that I think men should, you know, financially provide for the women that are in their lives, but it's exactly like what I just said. There's nothing sexy, provocative, dangerous, or adventurous about a woman seeing you in the first few months as a provider provisioning type of guy, okay? That's not what's gonna get them wet, all right? So, and you wanna get her in bed as quickly as possible, even if you are a guy that's looking for that long-term uh, type of situation. So just wanted to mention that. We are going to go into more detail uh, on those subjects uh, as we get uh, more into this video. We're going to touch on them, but let's keep going here. Second point I want to cover, second of three points I'm going to cover in this video. Number two, be very careful never to give off the vibe to a woman that you're afraid of losing her. All right. And the best way to do this is in the beginning, guys, in the first two to three months of, a, of getting to know a woman, always be date, dating more than just her. Be dating more women than just that one woman. Okay, let me explain. The first two to three months of dating a new woman, okay, even if you're a guy that's looking for something more long-term, in the first two to three months of dating a new woman, you always want to be dating. You, don't, you never want her to be the only woman that you're seeing. You want to be dating at least, at least one other woman, but ideally two or three other women, okay? You want to continue to go on new dates with new women, even after you've already met, you know, this, the main one out, or, or the one that you're interested in, let's say. Maybe you've already gone on two dates with her already. You still, on other nights, want to be meeting new women, okay? Um, and I'm going to talk about why that is. Now, if you are, okay, the type that is looking for something, you know, maybe you're not wanting to be a player or whatever and you're wanting something more exclusive and long-term, fine. But, you know, the reason I'm telling you this, the reason I'm emphasizing this and making this a point in this video is because if she is the only woman you're seeing, if she is the only one that you're dating, here's what's going to happen. You're going to subconsciously place too much pressure on just her, all right? Whether, whether you're intending to do it or not, okay? Because of course you're not going to intend to do this consciously. But that's, that's the point. You're gonna subconsciously place too much pressure on this one girl. And trust me, when you do that, guys, almost all women, 99.9% .9 of them will resent you for this. They will hate you for this, and the worst part is she won't even know why. They won't even know why, guys. And they won't know why, and because they won't know why, she'll sometimes feel guilty for feeling resentful, and because she'll feel guilty, okay, she'll feel even more resentful, okay? It becomes like a vicious type of cycle. And, you know, she'll start to resent you because you're the source of that, of that guilt. You're the source of that resentment. And women don't even understand how they, how they operate, all right? They don't understand, a lot of them don't understand their own nature. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't, all right? And so they'll lash out at you for being the source of that guilt and resentment. 
at the end of the day, ultimately, guys, what will happen is she'll resent you for being just another guy that came into her life that didn't get it, okay? That didn't get it, that wasn't alpha, all right? That did the opposite of what I'm telling you, uh, you know, the opposite of what I'm telling you to do here, all right? She'll resent you and hate you for being another guy that didn't get it, that came into her life, all right? That a, a guy that started dating her that quickly made her the center of his whole world and universe, all right? Which is the last thing a woman wants you to do. Now, what's gonna happen if you do this is the woman will eventually say to you, you know, I think we need to go our separate ways, okay? That's how these, these type of relationships always end, okay? She's gonna say that to you. Uh, sooner or later, trust me, she will. Now, if you're an alpha male, usually the alpha male will say that to the woman first before she'll say it to him, but, um, you know, we'll go into that in more detail another, on another video. So, let's see. Uh, and by the way, this will be an article on Mission Life Motion, as with all my videos, guys. So, uh, uh, check out missionlivemotion.com. Uh, article is going to go up two days from today, so be sure to check that out. I'm reading off the article here. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, a woman is going to say to you, you know, things, it's inevitable that if you make her, you know, the only woman you're seeing, you're going to subconsciously put a lot of pressure on that one girl and girls don't like that kind of pressure. I mentioned that a couple videos back. So she'll say that to you. She will. She will say that to you that she thinks, you know, we need to slow things down. I need to find myself a little bit more. Uh, I need more time being single. It hasn't been long enough since my last relationship ended. However she chooses to, to put it or word it, it'll be something to that effect. And um, if you're dating multiple women when she says something like this to you, you won't care because you'll know that you have two or three other women that you're also seeing, okay? If anything, it'll be kind of a re relief to hear her say that to you because you'll be like, oh God, good, because I didn't have time for, for you anyway, right? Because of the other three women you're dating. You'll come off, without even intending to come off this way, you'll naturally come off completely non-reactive when she tells you this, okay? Um, now, you might be asking, well, why would a woman say this if, you know, if you're not making her the center of your universe, if you are dating three other women, why would a woman, why would a woman say that? Well, what's gonna happen, guys, is when you're the alpha male that's dating, you know, three or four women at once, chances are a woman is still actually going to, to, to drop this on you, and I'll tell you why. She's, it, it'll take her longer to do it. She'll want to keep you around longer than if you're doing, you know, the other thing, which is putting too much pressure on her and being, you know, with her being the only girl you're seeing. It'll take longer for this to happen, but eventually she will still say this to you. And the reason for that is because she'll want you to commit to her. She'll know you're seeing other women and she won't like that. And she'll want you to, she'll at least try to get you to commit to her. Now, if you tell her no, she may accept that. She may not like it initially, but eventually she may accept it and, and may end up being okay with that and still keep seeing you. But most women will at least try to get you to commit to just them. They'll try to lock you down. And some women, um, you know, are looking for a, for an exclusive partner, which is fine. So some women aren't going to accept it. Some women are going to, going to say that and you know if you tell them no I want to keep seeing other women they're going to be out they're going to be gone from your life and you're going to have to be ready for that but I'll talk more about that here in a second so when you're the guy that is dating multiple women and she says this to you you're going to come off 
without even intending to do so, naturally unreactive, right? You're gonna naturally come off like almost relieved in a sense. You don't want her to think, you don't want her want to communicate that to her obviously, but um, th that's how you want to come off. You wanna naturally come off that way without trying to come off that way, okay? And that's exactly what will happen when you're dating multiple women. And this is gonna be so out of the ordinary to her, so different than what she's used to, that she'll be completely unsure of how to react to it, all right? It will be so far out of left field that she literally won't know how she's supposed to feel, okay? Because she'll either have never experienced it before, all right, a guy reacting like that, or it will have been so long since the last time she did experience it that she'll, she won't remember how she dealt with it. Um, you know, it's not very common for women to run into a guy that reacts indifferently like that to them telling the guy that, you know, giving them an ultimatum. You know, it's now or never. I don't like that you're seeing other women. Um, you know, you're, let's either make this exclusive and official or let's go our separate ways and you know when a guy has a I'll take you or leave you attitude it's it's very rare so they're not used to it um, and you know the other version of that is them saying well I think we, we need to take a break uh, you know I'm not crazy I know you're probably seeing other women I'm not real too keen on that and therefore I think we should slow things down we should take a break uh, stop seeing each other. They're expecting you to react to that emotionally and negatively. And when you don't react emotionally, when you don't react negatively, it's the same thing. They're like, whoa, this is different. I'm not used to, I've told this to like three other guys, four other guys, and this is the opposite of what those three or four other guys did. Okay. Um, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to be just dis too dismissive to her, but the, you, you just don't want to react emotionally and you don't want to uh, just react negatively or bad in any way. All right. So let's see. I talked about that. Okay. And this is going to drive her crazy. All right. For this is going to drive her crazy when this happens, guys, because you didn't give her what she wanted. And what she wanted was a reaction out of you. Okay. It's gonna drive her nuts, and there's just so many beneficial side effects to reacting with indifference that, you know, that indifferent attitude, that indifferent uh, disposition will do for you here that I could probably spend the next hour talking about it. I'm not going to do that, but, uh, Remember this, guys. Indifference makes the difference when it comes to women. That's something I heard a long time ago, and it's even more true now than it was then. Indifference makes the difference when it comes to women. So I'm going to tell you something about life that I've learned regarding women and dating and relationships, okay? And not, and not even just that, just life in general, all right? And that's this. Very often, it's the counterintuitive response or approach to doing things that will work best, that will get you exactly what you're wanting. It's the counterintuitive approach and response to the issue at hand that's going to solve the problem for you, all right? And the first time I heard that, it took me years. It literally took me like three years to really fully understand and appreciate what that meant. But as you go through your life, guys, you're going to see what you're going to understand. You're going to think back to the moment where you heard me say that just now, and you're going to understand what I meant when I said that. Okay. The first time you heard that, you're going to understand why that is. Okay. It's really hard to articulate. It's more of it's more so something you need to live through, but uh, 
you know, if you have questions on that, maybe leave those in the comments below or, or send me an email or something. But it's not always what you think the right response is that's the right response, okay? It's actually um, the counterintuitive, a counterintuitive approach that works best. So start thinking of how you can uh, maybe solve problems or issues in a different, in a way that you wouldn't think would be the typical response, okay? And you'll be surprised to find that a lot of times that will, will get you what you're wanting. So going back to a woman saying, you know, I think we need to slow things down. I think we need to go our separate ways. I think, you know, you need to commit to me or whatever. Get used to women saying things like that to you guys, women that you're seeing in your life, because it's going to happen a lot, okay, if you're dating a lot of women, especially if you fully embrace a uh, non-exclusivity type of lifestyle where Rolo Tomasi calls it spinning plates. Uh, you date multiple women simultaneously, non-exclusively. If you embrace that lifestyle, um, that's going to happen a lot, all right? Um, about half the women you date are, not all of them, but I would say about half of them are going to want you to commit to them exclusively, okay? Um, they've been conditioned to want monogamy uh, because of the period of time in the century they grew up in. Okay, you have too. Um, and when you don't give in to their request to become exclusive with you, when you don't give in to that, all right, and you shouldn't, in my honest opinion, if you're under the age of 33, um, then she'll either comply and accept the fact that you're sleeping, that you're seeing other women, or she won't comply with it and she won't accept it. Either way, it's okay. It's okay. Some women are not going to go along with your program. All right. That's a reality of the sexual marketplace that you guys are going to have to accept and get used to. All right. Big deal. All right. That's okay. All right. Some of your, some of the women you're seeing are going to drop off. Some of them actually do want to be exclusive with one guy. But, uh, you know, if you're a man chasing excellence, if you're obsessed with your, with your mission, with your vision, uh, if you're in your 20s or, or even your late, you know, late 20s, early 30s, in my opinion, if you're under the age of 33, and I'll tell you why this is here in a minute, but it's really in your best interest to remain non-exclusive to any one woman. It really, really, really is, okay? Um... So these are things you're going to have to get used to uh, and accept that are going to come with, with living that lifestyle. Um, now, when the women you know, that don't want to comply with your program fall off, what you'll usually see is they'll end up settling for some you know, beta bucks type of provider mail. Um, and you know, if you think back over your life and the women that you knew in high school and college or throughout your life, have you guys ever noticed how, and this is especially true of promiscuous women, okay? I think it's true of, of pretty much most women from my past that I've known growing up, but it's for whatever reason, especially promiscuous women I've noticed this with, have you ever noticed that they always seem to settle down with some, you know, beta, looking chump usually the guy you know is very ordinary looking uh he has a few extra pounds on him um you know he dresses he doesn't have a very good sense of style he dresses like you know i don't know like like a dork basically have you ever noticed that you know, women you knew from college that slept with like a hundred guys will always settle down with a guy like this. You know, we could make a whole video about that subject. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I, I just want you to know, you know, when you, you need to notice trends like that. You need to think about what that means when you, when you start th throughout your life and you start to notice things like that. 
Think about why that is. Why is it that women from your past, very attractive, or at least women that used to be attractive, um, why do they, I mean, even the ones that are still attractive, they seem to settle down with guys like that. Like, what the hell is she doing with him type of deal? Um, so food for thought, something to think about. That's definitely something I've noticed in my life. And I've noticed it a lot more with promiscuous women, uh, especially than I have with women that, that aren't promiscuous. Um, so I do want to make another quick point here before we go into the third and final point of this video, guys, and that's this. And, and I've kind of been talking about this a little already. In your younger years, guys, in your 20s, in your early 30s, okay, especially if you're younger than your 20s, my God. If you're in the younger part of your life, okay, don't be afraid to remain non-exclusive. All right. Understand that you were programmed from a very young age, guys, to think monogamy is the ultimate end goal. I'm here to tell you it's not. OK. Now, before you get the wrong idea here, I'm not against monogamy. I'm just saying that you were programmed by everyone in your life from a very young age to think that that is the ultimate success in life. That was the, you know, Disney, Hollywood, your mom, your dad, okay, your uncle, all right, your, your, your immediate and extended family, uh, your teachers, society programmed you to think that is what's going to make you content and happy. And I'm here to tell you that's not the main thing in your life that has to necessarily bring you happiness. They want you to think that's the case, and they may believe that to be the case about themselves, but they were brain, brainwashed just like you were, all right? They were conditioned to believe that, and they never realized they were conditioned. I'm telling you right now as you watch this that you were conditioned, okay? Um, you know, you can make monogamy work for you, and you can be happy with a, with with one woman, but you know, later in your life, but it's not the ultimate end goal. It's not guys. All right. True happiness and contentment should come from inside of you. You have to realize, and you have to internalize that you really have to internalize that guys, because until you do, you're going to keep leaning in the direction of, you know, trying to find contentment and happiness in a woman, you're going to put pressure on her. She's going to resent you for it. And it's going to end in disaster. Even if you end up marrying that woman or getting into an LTR long-term relationship with her, eventually that's going to come back and bite you in the ass because you made her your mission and not a part of your mission. All right. So, you really need to internalize that, that belief and that concept, guys, okay? Happiness and true contentment needs to come from within you, not from a monogamous, exclusive relationship with, uh, with a woman. Now, remaining non-exclusive for me personally has worked extremely well in my own life, for example, and has afforded me an abundance of opportunities. So I'll just take my current situation. I have more options in my life at this moment and the direction I want to take my life in than almost every single guy that I personally know in my life. Um, the video after the next one is probably, this is probably, probably the subject I'm going to do this on, but, um, and I have talked a little about it already, but I have options. I just moved. I just expatriated. Okay. I moved to Eastern Europe. Um, I sold all my shit. I got rid of everything. Okay. I have got less than 200 items. Okay. Most of them are books, you know, my laptop and my, my phone. All right. And a few other things. I sold everything I had. I packed up my life and I moved to uh, a country where the value of my currency stretches three times as far. All right. I geo arbitraged my income. Okay. And now I'm building 
my new business online and I have the ability to come and go as I please. I can live anywhere I want. Well, right now, since my business is still small, I have to stay somewhere more inexpensive, but that's only gonna be temporary, okay? Once this business is built up, you know, I'll have the ability to live anywhere I want in this world. And what that has afforded me, what that's given me, guys, is options. Options, okay? The degree to which true power is the degree to which a man has control over his own life, all right? Control and the freedom to choose, the freedom to come and go as he pleases. That's true power, okay? Control over himself, okay? And over his environment. And I am, you know, I've made great strides in the last few months towards towards that whole thing, all right? So what allowed me to do that was not getting tied down to one location, to one woman, committing myself to, you know, a uh, $100,000 student loan debt or a mortgage or too many credit card bills or a wife or kids, you know, I have, postponed all of that and you know if I decide I want those things now I can genuinely decide I want them and not be pressured into thinking I want them which is what happens to most guys so I will talk more about that two videos from now stay tuned for that by the guy by the way guys if you're not subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button it helps me out a lot when you guys subscribe to the channel uh, and when you do that and hit the notification bell as well, by the way, when you do that, you'll, you won't miss it when I come out with that video. That's going to be in about four or five days on that one. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. I talked about that. Okay. Last point, third point in this video, indifference. I did talk about a, a indifference a little bit. I just want to go into a little more detail on it. Indifference will make a woman go crazy. Okay. They want a reaction out of you, but what they, what they really want, guys, okay, what they truly want is to not get a reaction out of you. All right, what do I mean by that? Let me say that again, okay, because that's very important for you to internalize, okay? Indifference will make a woman go crazy. They want to get a reaction out of you, but what they truly want, men, what they really want is to not get a reaction out of you, okay? They just don't know it yet. This is one of the top alpha male traits that a man can exhibit, okay? Um, women go crazy over this, all right? Now, how do you achieve this? And what do I mean by this? Well. By becoming insanely busy, guys, doing things in your life, AKA working on your mission, be, you do it by doing, that's how you do it. You become insanely, insanely busy obsessing over your mission and the things you're trying to accomplish in your life that aren't related to her, okay? That's why the fo I focus so much on this subject of having a mission so much, guys. So much so that I named my whole damn channel and, and blog after it, right? Don't give the woman the satisfaction of knowing she got to you. Don't give her that satisfaction, okay? This is another one of those principles in life, guys, where taking a counterintuitive approach is the way to go. You guys have to realize something. Okay, it's not the fact that women, you know, it's not the fact that a guy is a bad boy or a rebel or the concept of indifference itself that sets you apart when it comes to hot women, all right? It's what that indifference communicates about you, okay? Women are very good at reading between the lines on things, okay? What does the behavior you exhibit communicate about you? All right, that part right there is the part to, about everything I'm telling you here to always pay very close attention to, okay? When it comes to the women in your life, all women, 
all right? New women you're meeting for the first time, and especially women you've known for a while. It's probably equally true with both of them, actually. Always be asking yourself, what does this behavior I'm exhibiting, okay, this attitude I'm exhibiting, the words I'm saying, what are all these things communicating to the woman? You have to start learning, you have to learn, guys, to start thinking about things from a woman's perspective, okay? This is another sales technique, all right? Always think about things from the perspective of your prospective buyer, all right? And when it comes to women, always remember they are reading between the lines of the communication, of the verbal and the nonverbal communication. Whether they know they're doing this or not is irrelevant, okay? They are always reading between the lines of what you are communicating with your actions and with your words, okay? What is your subtext telling her? Women only care about the subtext, okay? So let's conclude this, guys. Um, I did mention this, either, I think it was the last video or the, no, 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 two videos back. I kind of touched on this, but what I want to conclude this with is that women don't want to feel unsure, all right? In fact, they want to feel the opposite of that. They want to feel very sure and they want to feel very certain about you, okay? And I mean this in the sense of your congruency, all right, and your strength. That's what I mean that in the sense of. It's only when a woman realizes she doesn't feel sense, uh, sure of your uh, strength and congruency. It's only when she doesn't feel sure about those two things that she becomes difficult, moody, despondent, or unhappy. And most of the time, guys, when a woman starts to feel that way, it's usually because you don't feel sure of your own strength and congruency, okay? And you, feeling unsure of those things makes her feel unsure of them. So another thing to keep in mind. Just remember guys, a man is nothing more than the terms he stands by, okay? Your terms you're standing by in the, in the case of this point are that you have, number one, you have terms in the first place because a lot of men don't even have terms, okay? So you have to have them in the first place. And number two, that she can accept or reject your terms, all right? What she chooses to do, okay, whether she chooses to accept them or reject them, should not matter to you. It should not matter to you because you're standing by your terms regardless. You're more committed to your terms than you are to her, all right? That's the point. You have to be committed to what your terms are and you have to stand by them. You can't change your terms depending on how the woman reacts to them. You have to stand by your terms, always always all right never change your terms while a woman is deciding if she's going to accept or reject them you want to change the terms later fine but when a woman is in the middle of deciding whether she's going to accept or reject your terms you always stand by them all right um there are plenty more fish in the sea never forget that guys all right more women are being born every day okay every day more women are being born all right and if you're a single man in today's dating market, you should be constantly sourcing women, okay? You should constantly be meeting new women on a daily basis, all right? You should be meeting them in coffee shops. You should be meeting them on the street. You should be meeting them in parks. You should be meeting them online. You should be meeting them, you know, at the grocery store, okay? If you're a single guy in today's dating market, okay, in the sexual marketplace, you should be meeting at least, okay, at least one new woman a day, one new woman a day, at least. You really should be meeting like three new women a day, okay? Um, so, you know, and then there's also meeting them at night. There's social circle game, okay? There's, there's just an abundant, there's, like four main ways to meet new women and you should be meeting women from all of them, all right? Day game, night game, online game, and social circle. That's what healthy, sexually active, healthy-minded men in their prime do. They source women from multiple sources, from multiple places, okay? So that way when one woman rejects your frame, when one woman rejects your terms, 
okay, or rejects the idea that you aren't going to exclusively commit to her, okay, if you're a younger guy under 33, then you're at no loss. Then you're at no loss, okay, because you're meeting three new women a day. Doesn't matter, okay? Um, if you need to move to a big city in order to make that happen, then get out of the suburbs, okay? Get yourself into a, into a big city with a, with a high population, all right? Um, you want to keep your options open because when you have options, you have power, okay? And when you have power, you have mobility, okay? And you can come and go as you please. So hopefully you can see how this is all tying together, guys, all right? Um, there are two types of single men that are watching this video. There are the single men that want something more committed and long-term, and then there are the single men that want to experience a lot of women and want to be more of a player and, and experience and sleep with a lot of women. The advice I'm giving you here, okay, throughout this video, especially the part where I talk about dating more than one woman at once, this advice applies to both of you, both of you, okay? The first two to three months of dating a woman, you need to be dating multiple women at the same time, okay? If you like one of them, make sure you're seeing two or three other women so that you don't put too much pressure on that one, okay? And if you're in the first group, if you're in the group where you're wanting something more exclusive and long-term, keep that up for about the first, at least the first two months, okay? The first two to three months. And then after that, okay, um, you know, you can let some of the other ones drop off if you're interested in, in one of them. But anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I covered a lot of stuff in this video, so feel free to leave, uh, you know, any comments or questions down below. Make sure you hit the like button. It helps me out a lot when you guys like these videos, so smash that like button. Uh, again, become a subscriber. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be releasing a video two days from now. Um, get on my email list. There's a link in the description right below for you to get on my free content email list. I have uh, a free report uh, that's going to be uh, coming out here in the next one to two days about how to optimize uh, your online dating skills, how to optimize your ability to attract hot women online. So if you sign up for my email list here in the next couple days, that's going to be emailed to you. Um, so sign up for that now. Uh, even if you sign up today, you're still going to get that email to you uh, a few days from now. So do that, guys. Hit subscribe. Last thing, I do want to mention this stuff right here. The Grondike Soap Company has this stuff called Tactical Soap. This is my favorite flavor right here, Bond. Uh, what it is is all natural pheromone infused soap, guys. Uh, a lot of the soaps you guys use nowadays is infused with all sorts of crap that lowers your testosterone okay and fucks with your uh you know messes up your 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 horm, horm, hormones uh hormone panel whatever because uh, there's a lot of unnatural crap in there that you don't need to be putting on your body every day this stuff is not like that it's all natural and on top of that on top of not having crap in it that lowers your testosterone it has pheromones infused into the actual bar of soap that naturally attract women. So what more could you ask for? You know, again, single guy in the sexual, sexual marketplace, um, you know, why not stack as many odds in your favor as you can? So that stuff is the uh, second link in the description right below. It's the Grondike Soap Company Tactical Soap. This is Matt Mitchell from Mission Life Motion. I'll catch you guys in the next video.